This is Anad Vujo. I'm your host at this as far. My guest today is Eba Tesfaye, aka Eba T. He is a personal development coach and motivational speaker. Eba, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Good. Uh, Eba T, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Um, so, uh, my name, as you said, is Eba Tesfaye, uh, but most know me as Eba T, because uh, that's sort of the brand uh, that I go with. Um, it, it just, it's my name, Ebba. T stands for Tesfay, my father's name. Uh, and I use it as a brand with a tagline that says the voice of motivation. Uh, because a lot of people like my voice, so I said why not use it to inspire and motivate people. So majorly, uh, that's the area I'm in. Uh, so my background is in sociology and psychology. Uh, I studied uh, sociology for my BA and uh, counseling psychology for my MA. Uh, I love learning. I love going to school. I hate exams, <laughs> but um, so I learned a lot of things. Um, other than that, I studied uh, entrepreneurship. I studied uh, positive psychotherapy, neuro linguistic programming, uh, and just lately, I just finished my uh, training, and I'm certified and accredited by the European uh, Mentoring and Coaching Council as an executive coach. So I love learning. <laughs> other than that. Um, what do I do for a job? Uh, when people ask me what do I do, it's always puzzling for me because I do a lot of things. So I tell them I have a portfolio of jobs or work that I do. Um, just to mention a few, um, I run a training consultancy company. It's called TA Consultancy and Training. Uh, and we have three companies with my partners. Uh, TA Consultancy and Training, TA Media and Events, and then import, uh, export a business. Uh, Aside from that, I do voiceovers. Uh, like, for example, when you watch movies, uh, you hear that background bass voices that tell you, you know, something's gonna happen, you gotta come and watch the movie. I do those kind of things. Um, I also host events. Um, I host events on like corporate events, um, you know, like high level events, uh, not, uh, you know, parties or, <laughs> or concerts or anything Good. like that, because of my job with the training, you know. And so, um, I am, um, when, when I'm asked what kind of person I am, I'm, a, I'm the kind of guy that loves life, uh, that likes to explore, experience things. I love to travel, uh, and I truly, truly love meeting new people. <laughs> I love meeting people because you learn a lot from them, and you get to share um, ideas and stories, and you know. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us again about your childhood? Let's get back oh. to it. Okay, so uh, my childhood. I was born and raised in Fifine. Uh, I, was ra I was born in Zodito Hospital, uh, 1989, uh, Gregorian calendar. Uh, and I was born from an economist father and an accountant mother. They were economizing, so I'm the only child, so <laughs> I guess they were saving. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, but um, I'm an only child to my parents, at least that I know of. I don't know if they have other children that I don't know about, but uh, I'm an only child. Uh, but I grew up in a family that was caring for others, uh, and I love that. I learned that from them. Uh, so they, they were raising my cousins, they were educating them, they were taking care of my uncles and aunts, uh, you know, uh, just people from where they come from. Uh, they would bring them home, raise them, educate them, you know, try to give them a better life. Uh, so I grew up in that kind of family. So even though I was an only child, I never really felt like I was an only child. And I always say, oh yeah, I have uh, this sister, I have this brother, uh, but biologically, my parents only had me, but out of love, they had many children. Hmm. So I grew up in that kind of family. I also grew up, uh, even though I was born and raised in Finfinne, uh, I, <laughs> I didn't speak Amharic at all. I didn't even know it existed when I was a child. Because my parents, my father originally, uh, he studied in Russia, uh, USSR at that time. So when he studied in Russia, he got into a relationship with this um, Caucasian white girl <laughs> and he loved her wanted to marry her sent a photo back to his father in Wallaga and his father my grandfather said 
do not even think about bringing a woman that doesn't understand <laughs> or speak my language. Good. <laughs> So uh, my father said, okay, uh, he, didn't, he didn't marry her. Uh, he came back to Ethiopia and he married my mother. Uh, hence, my mother spoke the language and also is from the culture. Uh, and, you know, so my parents had this determination uh, that their son had to speak the language and understand and communicate with any family member that comes from a, a different part of, uh, you know, the country. So they made sure that I spoke Afan Romo, and that was my first language. That's how um, you know uh, became my mother tongue. So when I went to school, I didn't know other languages existed. <laughs> so um, people were speaking other languages. I didn't understand. I was like, "What are they talking about? They're not speaking my language." <laughs> so uh, came back home, and they still make a joke about this. They said, "Ah, Eba said." Uh, those guys don't have a language because they didn't speak his language. Uh, but later on, I learned. I learned languages. Uh, I love learning languages. I, I want to get to know more languages. Because a language is the doorway to somewhat a person's heart as well. Because you get to, uh, you know, touch hearts by words. So I love learning languages. I, I've studied uh, English after that I speak Amharic I speak Afan Romo a little bit of this a little bit of that I love uh, Ethiopian sign language I speak a little bit of it uh, I speak a little um, Somali uh, I speak a little you know like greetings and whatnot I love learning it I, I speak a little Tigrinya uh, just you know picking up words because I've realized uh, when you get to know um, the language at least you can communicate and get food, something to drink, Definitely. and you can even have fun with Definitely. people. So I learn languages. I love learning languages. Um, after that, my father, having me grow up, realized I was a very curious kid. I wanted to know things, and he was okay with it. I was his son. He said, hey, discover. So um, my grandparents always used to make fun of him when they went back to um, my father's father to Walaga or my mother's mother to Salali. They make fun of my parents saying, oh, those guys, uh, they're spoiled, huh? They let their child break a radio. <laughs> but my father was allowing me to be uh, curious because yeah. I listened to the radio. And when I listened to the radio, I said, oh, I want to know where the people speaking are coming from. So I wanted to see them. So I take the radio, pick it up, you know, turn it around. They're not there. I think they're inside. So my father said, okay, open and see. <laughs> and I broke the radio to see and find the people inside. <laughs> what a ridiculous man. <laughs> I know, but it's a, it's a childish thing. But my father allowed me to do that because that was for me a permission to discover the world. That was a new way. And let me tell you something amazing. He gave me two radios to break and see. <laughs> radio was expensive at that time. Yeah. It was a big deal. In the meantime, he's an economist too. Yeah, and, he, and he's an economist too. And yet, he gave it to me for me to try it out and see. And I loved it. Um, one thing that, that, that amazes me is I tried to find the voice in that radio, but I ended up finding my voice. So years later, I became a radio show host. Wow. <laughs> well done, man. See what I mean? So yeah. if you allow your kids to do it, like, for example, I talk to some parents and I tell them, you know what? Let them see, let them touch it, let them break it. Um, there's this glass. Yeah. This glass might have value, but yeah. does it have more value than your child? How, how come? So sometimes kids want to take this and they want to let it go. Yeah. And they want to see what's going to happen. Sure. They're learning physics, <laughs> gravity. But we tell them, oh, they're going to break things. Let them break it. They're learning what breaks, what doesn't break. They're learning how it breaks. They're learning gravity. They're learning speed. They're learning all of these things. So for them, it's an experience. Because when we bring them into this world, they don't know the world. They have to discover the world. They have to get to know the world. So that's all they're doing. 
So when you allow your child to discover the world, you protect them somehow, but you let them discover. That way, you will have a child that has an open mind. An open mind to receive, to understand better, to try and see, to know good from bad. A parent's job is three things. You get them through three levels. One is dependency. They're dependent on you. You feed them, you shower them, they even release on you mm. the, the, the processed <laughs> yeah. outcome. Yeah. And you clean them. Yeah. They're dependent, fully dependent yeah. on you. Yeah. That's the first level. Yeah. Your job is to take them from dependent level to independency which means they get to eat them by themselves, they get to go to the bathroom by themselves, they get to bathe themselves, yeah. the list goes on. Yeah. Indecision as well, it's the same thing. If you only make decisions for them, they will never learn to know good from bad because you are the one that's making the decision for them. But if you show them and help them understand what's good and bad, they can choose good. That way, you teach them to go to independence. The third level you have to get them to is interdependency, which basically means this. Um, a child learns about social things from their parents. So you teach them how to live in a social environment where they get to help people and get people to get to help them. They learn about a doctor and a farmer, how they're both you know, helping each other. The farmer feeds the doctor, the doctor heals the, the, the farmer. So interdependency is the level you get them to, and that's your job. Dependency, interdependency, I mean, uh, independency and then interdependency. Yeah. These three levels, and then you, you got your kid, you got a strong kid. Really wonderful, Eba. Okay, you've got your BA degree from uh, Addis Ababa University, right? Later on, you joined Afro FM 105.3 yes. as a radio host. Yes. Uh, but your BA is in sociology, yes. isn't it? Yes. How come? Is that a personal calling or got a relationship with the radio that you, your father gave you at an <laughs> early age? Um, so, funny story is, I learned English to become an actor. Okay. <laughs> I really wanted to work on, in Hollywood and I wanted to be an actor. Not a Hollywood, but I wanted to be an actor. Okay. So, because I used to watch a lot of English movies and I learned English by practicing just by myself. I would go into a room and I would talk to myself because I didn't want somebody else to laugh at me because of my English. Yeah. I didn't speak English. Yeah. Third grade, I fell because I couldn't speak English. Yeah. <laughs> I, I went to, no, fourth grade. Fourth grade, I did it twice because I didn't speak English. Mm -hmm. Then I made a decision. I said, I have to learn. And by myself, I would be in a room and I'll practice by myself. I'll talk to myself. I'd watch one movie six, seven times. Mm -hmm. And I'd say the words with them because mm -hmm. I would know the script by then. Yeah. I'd be in a room and I'd be speaking to myself. Yeah. Hi, Abba, so how are you? And I'd be the other guy go like, hey, mm -hmm. how are you? Mm -hmm. You know, I did both parts. Yeah. And I learned English. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Because I wanted to be in the entertainment industry, I, I practiced English and I got to learn English. But later on, um, I realized I wanted to inspire people. The reason I wanted to inspire people was because at a certain age, I needed a mentor. I needed somebody to motivate me. I needed somebody to tell me I am valued. Living uh, in the capital with people that come from different cultures, and sometimes with people that didn't understand or want to accept my culture, I faced some challenges. Uh, I faced challenges because of my name, where people said, uh, I mean, why? <laughs> uh, people asked me, what does your name mean? And I told them, blessed one, or the Amharic version would be Baruk or Barakat. <laughs> and they would just say, why don't I just call you Baruk? And I'd be like, no, that's not my name. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And those, you know, challenges um, really didn't make me feel accepted. Uh, and, I, and I felt really bad. And I tried to do a lot of things to, to be accepted by people. And some of those things harmed me, um, you know, emotionally. And because of that, 
I, I started really going deep into negative emotions. And one day, I remember, I came back from school and I asked my father, I said, what happens to people that don't believe in God? And then he started, he took out the Bible and started reading to me. Mm -hmm. And from that day onwards, I started following up a, a spiritual practice, a church. Uh, and then I, I changed something. That changed something in me. What did it change? I used to not love me. I didn't love me. I didn't like me. <laughs> Leave love. I didn't like me. Mm. I didn't think I was handsome. Now, you know, I think I'm handsome. Yeah. <laughs> I think I could be a model. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but in the past, I didn't think yeah. I was, you know, attractive yeah. to me. Yeah. I didn't like my name. I wanted to be called Jack uh, from Jake and the Fat Man, a yeah. movie that we used to watch when yeah. we were kids. Yeah. Um, I hated my hair. I wanted to have like a silky uh, blonde hair where I could go like this. Um, but then... When I started following up the spiritual practices, I realized this concept that said, if everybody else doesn't love me, the God that created me loves me, so I'm okay. So why don't I love me? And then I started accepting myself and loving myself. Now this is the first principle I teach people now. Accepting yourself is the first level into transformation. Yeah. You get what I mean? Because yeah. you have value, you have um, beauty in you, but you have to recognize that first. Yeah. A lot of people think loving yourself is being selfish. No, even the good book says, love your neighbor as yourself, which means you have to love who first? Yes. Yourself. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> you get what I mean? Yeah. Um, the golden rule says, treat everyone else the way you would like to be treated. Yeah. You have to think about the way you want to be treated mm -hmm. in a good way. Mm -hmm. So I started loving me. Mm -hmm. The moment I did that, mm -hmm. everybody else started accepting me. Because yeah. the first problem was, it wasn't my face, it wasn't my name, mm -hmm. it wasn't how I looked and how I talked. Mm -hmm. It was how I saw myself. Yeah. And that changed. Yeah. Then people started appreciating my name. <laughs> people started appreciating how I looked. People started noticing, and even I started noticing some qualities that I had, like for example, my voice. Mm. I didn't know it before that. Yeah. But now, it's one of the things that a lot of people appreciate and know about me. And they say, oh, Ebba, we love your voice. And I'm like, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I know how to use it now, because yeah. I started practicing. Yeah. But it came from noticing and appreciating what you have. 